morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody who is joining us today from all over the world. Uh, as you can see, our uh, group is growing by the minute, so we're just going to wait one or two more minutes in the hopes that everyone who has registered will be able to join us, uh, but very much looking forward to sharing with each of you about Braemar College, the student experience there, and uh, any information you'll need to make sure that your student has a chance to uh, join us here. So just one or two more minutes, please, and then we'll begin the presentation proper. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, it seems that most of the registrants have arrived. We're very happy to see all of you and we'll assume that a few others will be joining us in the opening minutes of this meeting. Uh, but we did say 10 o'clock, it's 10.02 now, so we might as well get going. First, a big welcome to all of the, the parents and the guardians out there looking for information about Braemar College. We have participants today from all over the world. Welcome to those of you joining us from places like Lagos and Hanoi and Nairobi and Mombasa, uh, Tehran, um, everyone from South America, including Bogota and Monterrey and Medellin. Uh, bienvenido a la gente. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, very excited just to share with you about our school and the possibilities of the student experience there. My name is Mr. Mike Helsby, and I'm the Director of Student Experience here at Braemar, have been so for three years, uh, and looking forward to sharing my perspectives on uh, what life will be like for your student at Braemar. But we also want to welcome and thank uh, a few of our staff members for being here, as well as a few student ambassadors who are gonna take some time near the end of the presentation to share their experience uh, with you. Very quick introduction to us before I turn it over to some of our staff. We are joined today by our principal, Ms. Virginia Lemieux, by our Director of Online Learning and Pathways, Ms. Sarah Schumacher, by our Head of Online Learning, Ms. Jessica Koza, Hoping to be joined any minute now by our student services manager, Mr. H.K. Son, and by our sales and admissions manager, Ms. Tamara Konoval. Uh, we're going to begin this presentation, which we're hoping to take about 45 minutes of your time with today, by having each of these staff members uh, talk with you very briefly about their role here at Braemar, as well as their perspective on what Braemar offers the students, uh, especially as it relates to that role. And we're gonna begin with our principal, Mrs. Virginia Lemieux. Hi, Virginia. Virginia, we cannot hear you. Maybe try without the uh, headset. Uh, 
as we've become all too used to in the, uh, the past year and a half. Just a quick technical difficulty here. Uh, but we'll hope that Virginia is able to sort out the audio in just a moment. Uh, while we wait, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Miss Sarah Schumacher and have her talk about uh, some of our pathways program and online learning for students. Hi, everyone. Can you can you hear me? Just making sure. Good. Perfect. Um, like Mike said, thank you, uh, Mr. Halsey, for the introduction. I've been working at Braemar since 2015. Oh. Um, I started off as an ESL, so English as a second language teacher, worked in guidance for a few years, and now I'm helping with guidance and also um, online learning. So students that are taking asynchronous courses or a live stream. So I've been helping students with their timetabling. So as soon as they come to Braemar, they tell me um, I'm interested in sciences, math, um, I'm interested in English. So from there, we put out their courses so that, um, so that by the time they finish their program, um, they are eligible for that particular university or college. So in addition to timetabling for a university and college, I help coordinate reference letters. I help with their program selection. So often students don't know what they want to study. Um, so we have tools to help them find their interests. I also help organize university and college visits as well. We use a My Blueprint career planning and education tool that over hundreds of school boards use in Canada. So students can participate in Who Am I surveys, they can search post-secondary programs, and also build their resume and cover letters using this tool. So I think my favorite thing about Braemar is my colleagues and students. So if you watch the videos, the YouTube videos, you can see that all the students are talking about how supportive their teachers are and how amazing it is to learn from a diverse group of students. Um, so it's been amazing just seeing all the students grow and um, yeah, that's my experience. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, just gonna check on that audio again. How are we doing, Virginia? Still having those tech difficulties. Fortunately, there is no shortage of staff to talk to you today. Uh, next up, I'm gonna turn things over to Ms. Jessica Koza, our head of online learning. Now, as all of you know, these last two years have been anything but normal in the, in, in the world in general, but in the world of education, perhaps especially. And Jessica, along with other members of our staff, and of course, all of our students have been adapting in, in really cool ways to make sure that students aren't missing out on the educational experience at Braemar, whether or not they're able to be here with us in person or even here with us in Toronto. We do have students learning from all over the world, we're proud to say. Uh, and Jessica, along with others, are responsible for making sure that that continues to run smoothly. So Jess, hopefully we've got some audio for you. Let's find out. Uh, can you guys hear me? All right, we can. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm Miss uh, Jessica Koza, and I started here actually three years ago in uh, 2018. And I actually started off as a grade um, 11 and 12 English teacher. Um, and I still do that, uh, so I love uh, doing that. Um, but I'm also now working as um, a kind of a head of online learning and uh, online mentor for students. So yeah, as Mr. Mike Helsby said, a lot of students had to switch to um, just um, online learning over the past uh, two years. And uh, one of those platforms is called TVO ILC. So that's uh, Bramer's um, online learning partner. And uh, basically, with um, if someone chooses that option, it's just uh, fully online. The student goes at their own pace. Um, there's not really any deadlines, except um, they plan to finish in nine weeks by the end of the term. Um, but of course, uh, courses like that can be a bit, um, a little bit tricky for students who um, maybe aren't used to just planning out their time and, and kind of um, meeting deadlines. Um, so I'm the one who kind of uh, meets with them every week and uh, we talk about how it's going, how they're doing, if they have any issues, um, how maybe, maybe more assignments they need to do. And I'm just kind of uh, fully there to, uh, to make sure that they get it done on time. I actually do want to show you guys um, maybe what a TVO ILC course looks like in case um, some people are maybe interested. 
So maybe if I can just share my screen. Um, oh, it says I can't, but. Okay, now I can, so I'm just going to, uh, uh, just uh, as an example, we're just gonna look at English for you on uh, TVO ILC. So you can see that uh, the platform looks something like this, where you have uh, all your units on the uh, left-hand side, uh, you have kind of tabs for um, where to submit assignments. So for example, if I just click on uh, unit one here, um, we have all the lessons right here, 1.1, 1.2. And uh, basically um, the student would do one or two lessons each day, um, aiming to kind of spend about two, two hours per day on the TVO course. Uh, so for example, I'll just click once so I can uh, show you guys. Um, let's see here. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, it's not really uh, letting me go down. But uh, but just I just wanted to show you guys. So if this is something you're interested in, it's just um, an, an option where you can do fully online. So there is no uh, teacher support except for me meeting with the student every uh, every week. But uh, that's actually been popular through the pandemic, especially for students who are overseas, and the time difference is very hard to. Um, kind of um, adjust to. So they necessarily can't really do the Bramer live stream. Um, and then another um, online platform that we have is, is actually our own called um, Bramer Online Academy. So that one as well, uh, we have options that are uh, fully asynchronous. So that means the student just logs in every day, they read the lessons and um, they can reach out for help to me if they need. Um, but uh, that again, you're not dependent on a teacher, you just uh, go at your own pace. And so that's very exciting. We actually uh, are just starting that this year. Um, and that looks very similar to TVO, um, to the TVO platform. And uh, yeah, and I guess, um, yeah, those, so those are our main two. So we have the TVO ILC option and then Bramer Online Academy option um, if the student wants to do fully online. Um, and uh, sometimes what we what happens actually is that a student chooses to do a uh, half live stream. So half their day is is actually on Zoom with the teacher. And then maybe if it's a little bit too late to do another live stream, then they choose to do one online course. So TVO or um, BOA. And then they just do that by themselves at any time they want. And uh, yeah, I guess so that's, that's all for me. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Jen. Um, like Jess and, and like Sarah and like Virginia, I've also been a teacher here at Braemar. And uh, one of the great things about being a teacher, especially from the last few years, is you get to learn how to sort of roll with the punches and adapt to this online learning. Um, Jess, more, perhaps more than anyone, is familiar with the unique challenges that, that face students when they learn online. Um, and having a designated staff member ready to support them there every single week uh, through their asynchronous learning uh, has been a big, big boost. And one of the ways that we've made sure we continue to support and care for the students, despite the, the ever-changing circumstances. And, uh, and speaking of adapting to ever-changing circumstances, we're going to try once more to get our principal, Mrs. Virginia Lemieux on. Virginia, can we? Hi, hi. Hey, there everybody. we go. Can you hear me now? Great, Welcome. thank you. Oh, thanks, Mike. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining today. I'm very happy to see you all and to hear from all of you if you have any questions. Our recruiters are also here, Lynn and Daniela. Um, so um, in our philosophy of education, it's important for our students to feel comfortable. Uh, we have student, uh, our pedagogy in education is for students to be student-centered. So our students, uh, are they meet with their teachers at the beginning of term, um, also at midterm growing success conferences and at the end of term before their exams. There's always clear communication. Um, the students always know their progress. They always know where they stand, how, what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, and how can they improve? So this is really important. We wanted our students to feel comfortable, to have clear communication with caring teachers, um, even when they're online, like with Jessica and with uh, Sarah, they have that support. Um, our staff members are really uh, an amazing team. I've been at Braemar College since 1997. I know some of you haven't been born yet, right? <laughs> but that's okay. I've uh, taught at Braemar College also since 1997. And, 
it's really the people, the people and the teachers and the parents. I had a parent from um, one of the students, her, her son is in University of Montreal right now, and now she wants her daughter to come. So it's always, um, the proof is in the pudding, right? It's uh, the, pay, the people come and they, they see us, they know us, universities know us. Uh, they, they tell us that our students are chosen over other schools because they know our students are prepared. They know that our students finish the degree. They finish their degree and succeed in life. So this is something, you know, we, we are here like you, it's the triangle of the parents, the school and the student, we all support each other. And that's the strongest structure. And uh, educationally, the students do feel heard and they do have their activities. And um, that's why one of that student yesterday, the parent said she doesn't feel comfortable at her other school. There's no socialization. She, do, she, feels, she doesn't feel motivated to study. And so uh, she said, I want her to study at Braemar. And this is the thing, that's the difference at Braemar. We pay attention to details. We're always in touch with our students. And if they have any problems, we try to meet their needs, try to help them as much as we can. It's always with kindness and hard work. That's what Braemar is all about. And um, our founder, Sheila McDonald, she always believed she herself immigrated to Canada from Scotland. And she wanted a home away from home and also a, a special place even for Canadian students too. So um, I think uh, from the students, directly, you'll find out if it's true, if it's, you know, what we say, it's not just from the people who work here, but it's also from the students, you really have to feel their honest um, testimonials, and uh, ask some questions, because that's always important for everyone to ask questions. And we're very open to that. So um, please, if you have any questions, uh, we're always available to answer your questions. And we are very happy to have students and to be um, graduating students for the past 25 plus years. Uh, it really warms my heart when they come back with their wives and their children. That really tells me every day when I wake up, I know I, um, we're doing the right thing here at Braemar. So it's a special place and uh, it's really important for us to have the students feel heard and feel uh, warm and want to learn. That's the thing, there's a love of learning here and all of us are dedicated. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say, but uh, thank you for, for joining us and for taking the time today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for the bear myself, V. Thank you so much for that. Um, I want to delve a little bit further now uh, into exactly what Virginia is talking about when she talks about uh, attention to detail, concentrated care, uh, love of learning, socialization, and really especially, I think, uh, something that we may call an ethos at Braemar, making this place a, a home away from home for our students so that there is no separation necessarily between the home life, the community life, and the educational life, uh, both of the student and of the school. Uh, that's something that we all heartily believe in. And I just want to take a few minutes to sort of show you a glimpse of how we do that at Braemar. As you can see, Braemar College is, first of all, located in a position that makes us able to provide some of those things uh, that Virginia and I just mentioned. Uh, you can check out this, this little animated map on the right, but we are in a prime position to offer students uh, access to cultural institutions, as well as a view of one of the, the great universities of Canada directly across the street, the University of Toronto, so that, that their educational experience is not something that's happening in a vacuum in a classroom and doesn't seem to really reach out and connect with the rest of their world. Their education doesn't stop when the, the bell rings and, and they go to lunch or at the end of the day when they, they leave their classroom, it continues as they walk out onto the street and encounter majority university students walking past or as they walk past the, the Art Gallery of Ontario or past uh, the Royal Ontario Museum, the Royal Conservatory of Music, even cultural centers like, like Kensington Market. It's all surrounding us. And this gives the school an excitement and, and a vibrancy that may be lacking elsewhere. We do 
of course, first and foremost, put our students front of mind in everything that we do. Um, and we are eager to see them succeed however they come to us and whenever in their education journey they come to us. You can see here some, some numbers on the left that we're quite proud of, uh, our students' graduation rates and the destinations that many of them choose uh, to attend afterwards. This is a big part of the role that Ms. Sarah Schumacher plays and a big part of the emphasis that our teachers put on students' education. We believe that goal orientation is a big part of what provides motivation and purpose. And this is something that's expressed not just in our classrooms, but also in a lot of our extracurriculars and in our co-curriculars. Um, I'm thinking especially right now, just this past week, we brought in a, a representative from uh, the Youth Wellness Network. And we ran a session with about 15 students uh, for an hour during their mornings, where we focused on goal setting strategies and accountability, uh, and looked at some of the, the science and the numbers behind how setting goals and having someone or, or some strategy that keeps you accountable really uh, increases your chances of success as you measure it. Uh, and of course, we, we look at university entrance rates as one among several measures of student success. We're very, very proud to, to be able to put visuals like this up there for you. A big part of what Virginia means when she says we pay attention to detail and we concentrate on students or at least one of the things that allows us to do this is our classroom model, our class model, uh, as opposed to the traditional model that uh, I went through when I, I did my, my public education here in Canada and that perhaps many of your students have gone through in the past. We're not at offering five, six, seven classes a day for students. We have our students doing two or at the most three classes a day. These are highly focused classes in small classroom settings with a designated teacher teaching a focused subject every day. Okay, so in the mornings from 9.15 until noon, with a 15 minute break in between, your student will focus on a single subject. They will do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And this allows them through that focus to build that base of knowledge and ability much, much faster. It also allows them, if they so choose, to focus on what we refer to as a, a pathway or a, a single collection of courses that are all geared towards a single purpose, especially a single field of study, perhaps in their post-secondary education. So as opposed to a public education where you may receive, let's say, a, uh, a grade 11 math course that a student is passionate about and that it, they excel in, and then ask them to wait for perhaps eight months before they get to jump up to that grade 12 math class, perhaps that advanced functions or that calculus class. If that student is passionate and they have a mind for mathematics, they're not forced to undergo that interruption. They can jump right into an, another uh, math class in another 10 week term coming up. These classes also mimic, of course, the first year experience of a university student who will be asked to sit regularly in lectures that are two, two and a half, three hours long. And if all they've done in their high school experience is take 75 minute class after 75 minute class and jump from one to another three or four times over the course of the day, they may not have those mental habits prepared to sit for that extended period of time. And we feel like our model really helps them to develop those habits and those skills um, to, to maintain that focus and attention for longer periods of time as they'll have to in university and of course in their later uh, life. Now for me, uh, it's, it, it's really important to emphasize that education at Braemar does not stop in the classroom. My role as the director of student experience is to make sure that students who come here uh, have a, an educative life and that when they leave the classroom, there isn't that divide between home life and school. Um, again, very, very lucky to be in the location that we're in, but also very lucky to have the students that we have coming to us from all over the world with this massive range of experience and abilities and perspectives. Um, we 
try really hard to respond to the interests and the passions of our students with a robust student activities program. Um, and this includes student clubs that are run uh, at every single lunchtime and some after school. Uh, we have uh, designated fitness sessions with uh, certified trainers after school, four days out of five. Uh, we focus very heavily on whole life health, trying to engage with the body, with the social life, and of course, with the broader community, believing that all of these are interconnected. Um, to do this, uh, as I said, we bring in uh, workshops built around uh, mindfulness and mental health. We also try to extend as many opportunities as possible for our students to volunteer in the surrounding community. So for example, this year, we've developed some really nice partnerships with uh, the Fort York Food Bank and the Scott Mission, uh, where we have groups of students volunteering three days out of five. We also have a, a group who's working right now to put together the uh, Witchwood Barnes Eco Fair. And a few of our students this year have also started writing uh, environmental pieces uh, for one publication here in Canada. And so we're proud of all these initiatives, but mostly we're proud of the students because it comes from their passion and it's fulfilled by their effort. Just wanted to give you one small taste. This is our, our current uh, October calendar for our student activities. As you can see, uh, a lot of emphasis on those three levels of health, right? The personal, the social, and the communal. Uh, we take the, the personal health of, of the mind and the body very seriously. You can see those after school sessions with running club, weight room, uh, flow yoga, what we call the Friday flex, where we have some fun with some calisthenic stuff. Uh, we have a cooking club. We just ran it last night. It was a lot of fun. We did uh, some uh, corn flour pancakes with an avocado tomato salsa. It was delicious. I always love running that club because I don't have to make myself dinner. Uh, but we also feel like we, we're giving students skills while giving them a, a healthy and nutritious meal there. I'm very proud to, to bring in an external partner, Rooks to Cooks, where we have a professional chef guiding our students at that club. Uh, we do Mindfulness Mondays. We have a well-being club on Tuesdays, Film and Drama Club Wednesdays, a Creatives Club on Thursdays, which I'll touch on a little bit more in just a minute, and our Philosophy and Debate Team Fridays. I'm just really, really proud of, uh, of the students for making this stuff happen and participating as much as they do in our vibrant student life. And speaking of those students, uh, I feel really lucky that, that we have three of our, our wonderful students joining us today. Um, they make my job a whole lot easier. All three of them in, in multiple cases have really, really helped me to make our student life what it is. And I'm, I'm just proud of them as people and kind of proud to show them off to you today. Uh, we welcome Marina Mazur, Alexander Melanin, and Alexander Simpson uh, with us today. And each of them is just gonna spend a minute or two talking to you about their own experience. Um, I'm gonna start with Alexander Simpson. Uh, uh, kind of one of the elder statesmen of, of Braemar at this point, a guy who's been with us uh, for several years now and has, he's been a wearer of many hats. Uh, he's played multiple, multiple roles in our student life. Uh, he is part of our student leadership group. He's also the editor in chief of our student newspaper and a general man about town in the hallways, uh, always looking very, very dapper and fresh and always extending his kindness and his energy to others. So we're pleased to have him here with us. Sasha, would you, would you mind just uh, telling us what your experience at Braemar has been like and what stood out to you uh, about it as a school and, and as a student culture? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ellsby, for your kind words. Uh, but uh, what really stood out to me about Braemar was the open nature of the student body, because there's a common stereotype about high schools of it being some vicious social network. Everyone has their cliques. People are going to hit you and hurt you. But when I came to Braemar back in 2018, I had a very universal experience where everyone was on the same boat of not knowing what was going on, of everything things seeming a little Uh, and frankly, that in that regard is very open and friendly to grow. So uh, 
In terms of student culture, there is, due to the diversity of our student body and the frank truth that we have people from many different cultures, I've had amazing conversations and opportunities to learn about the world that I simply would not have had had I gone to a public school. And I am ever thankful for that. So that's pretty much what my experience at Bramer has been like, one of growth, one of learning, and uh, one of just improvement. I am for sure a better man now than I was when I came here, thanks to the experiences that Bramar gave me. And I am internally grateful for that. Thanks so much, Sasha. Um, after that speech, I'm sure nobody's wondering why we bring Alexander Simpson in to, to talk to parents about these, these kinds of things. Uh, he's a guy participating on our debate team, for example, but, but one of the real, um, for me, points of pride and, and examples of what a student can become here at Braemar. Um, another such student, absolutely, is uh, Marina Mazur. And Marina uh, has been with us also for a number of years now. Again, uh, someone who's a, a huge part of our student life, someone who really goes out of her way to make sure that not just she gets to enjoy our, our different events and trips at school, but also that the lovely group of friends that she's cultivated is always a part of it. And she, she's a mainstay at pretty much everything we do here. Uh, but Marina, I'm, I'm hoping right now, because uh, this term, especially, you've chosen to be one of our students who takes the express education option. So Marina has dedicated herself to her academic studies this term and is taking three courses uh, every day. And those are three two and a half hour courses. So this is a very, very serious young woman uh, and also a very, very serious schedule that she's set for herself. But Marina, can you just talk to us a bit about your ex general experience at Braemar, as well as uh, this specific situation you're in now with our express education model and the supports that you've received in that? Thank you, Mr. Halsby. Yes, so uh, I joined Braemar family uh, last year. I studied grade 10 here. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't come to Canada and I was studying from uh, my home country, from Ukraine. Uh, first term where like it was completely new, something completely new from my uh, experience in my public school in Ukraine. Uh, but I really got used very fast uh, thanks to the teachers and for their support. Uh, and I, it was much more interesting, exciting. I made a lot of friends and I couldn't imagine that I will have such a huge variety of nationalities. And uh, yeah, currently I'm taking three courses. Um, it's, uh, I, I, to be honest, it's difficult, but uh, the main point is uh, uh, to organize everything effectively, not to push your, uh, yourself too hard. And it all, uh, teachers always help me with this. Uh, they uh, always support me with this because they know that I'm taking three courses. And I'm not saying that maybe my grades came, uh, my, my grades didn't get worse and they are stable. And nevertheless, I'm taking three courses and uh, I study a lot, spend a lot of time on this. Uh, but I get a lot of support from my teachers uh, that I didn't get from my uh, public school in Ukraine. Every time when I came uh, to Ukraine, to Ukrainian school, uh, I feel like a lot of stress on me. And when I was writing exams or tests, they're like, I was completely stressed. But here I came to school with a smile and meet every, uh, my friends, teachers. And I feel much more comfortable here being in Canadian school rather uh, in my previous schools. And uh, I, the atmosphere here at school is completely different. And I'm really thankful to be a big part of this family. I cannot say this school or um, 
it just it's really a family friendly family that everyone can help you and support you in any situation you have thank you thank you marina and uh Thank you for saying those kind words. I, even though this is a presentation, obviously for others, I know how much it means to, to the staff and the teachers who uh, had the pleasure of, of having you in their life these past few years, uh, just to hear you say those things. And, and thanks for, for being willing to share them. Uh, we're gonna turn to, to one last uh, student. Uh, I'm gonna go to Alexander Mullinen now. And, and I tried, uh, as I was asking a few of these students to, to come and join us today, to give a range of experiences. And when, when I asked myself, uh, what sort of new student at Braemar can I bring in to, uh, to speak and really give a representative experience? The first name that came to mind was Alex's. Because this is a young guy who's just joined us uh, in this past month. Uh, and in that month, he's very, very quickly integrated himself into the culture of Braemar. I'm very pleased and, and proud to say, proud of him, especially for the, for the bravery that he's shown in doing so. So Alex, I'm gonna leave this a little more open for you, but can once again, just talk to us about your, your early experiences in the past month at Braemar and how it's been integrating into this school. Yeah, uh, I thank you for the kind words. That really means a lot to me. Um, I'm a bit nervous. There's uh, too many people here in the Zoom call, but uh, okay, um, I'll start from the start. I've been only here for around a month and a half, I think I've moved Basically, by, yeah, by myself, uh, none, none of my relatives live in Canada. I've just moved to Canada and um, had to live at a homestay. And it's all been pretty, pretty nice. Uh, the first few weeks were um, uh, very stressful. I have to admit that. But, uh, you know, school actually made sure I was, made sure I was you know, taken care of properly. And the staff were incredibly nice. Um, I didn't even have to do anything. I was already, oh, hey, first time, first day at school. Okay, go here. And I, I went here and okay, I did everything for you here. Now you have just, just these classes. I was briefed on all the classes, all the activities, all the how to join, you know, this uh, group online to see what my grades are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the length of the classes is um, a bit different, I must say. I'm used to like eight classes a day, each one 45 minutes. Um, but to be honest, it does make sense because uh, to have long classes, because um, when you think about it, switching tasks so frequently, even if it's just for 45 minutes, uh, doesn't bring much, much benefit, right? We're not meant to multitask. Uh, I think there was some study on... Um, on the effectiveness of it and that they actually realize that there is no such thing as multitasking it's just switching there's only one task that your brain can focus on and it's and if you keep switching that task it, it takes like around 10 minutes to adjust or like 20 minutes to adjust to, to the new task and um so i actually kind of grew to enjoy the two and a half hours um and there's also a lunch break for an hour between the two classes which uh, you get to you know just uh, hang out with others, get to know other people, uh, or in my case, just uh, be scared in a corner. But <laughs> no, uh, I met some really nice people. Sasha, for example, um, uh, he's been incredibly nice. I went to lunch with him. I, I, he has so so much knowledge, so much random things. It's, it's amazing. Um, and uh, Mr. Elsby here, he's been also incredibly amazing, just a really nice uh, cooking club. I went to cooking club uh, with him uh, yesterday. Uh, I made the most disgusting meal possible, but it was really fun. Uh, it was, um, I, I wouldn't eat it for the life of me. Uh, I don't know how I created a monster, but I really enjoyed it. And um, stuff like that after class or during lunch, like philosophy club, uh, it was super nice. Um, additions to uh, to the school day that uh, they really break up the monotony of for example just going through two and a half hours of chemical equations or yeah i, I mean that's basically all i have to say uh, it's been pretty pretty nice here appreciate all the staff too they made it way better um, thank you alex uh appreciate your candor appreciate the honesty um, because we, we can't hide the fact that when you join a, a new high school, especially someone from, from a new country coming, as you say, living in a homestay with relatives overseas, uh, this isn't something that we as adults 
would think of as easy or, or, or a simple process. And we're asking uh, teenagers to do it. And the fact that they're able to, the fact that they have the resolve and the adaptability that people like Alex and Marina and Sasha have shown um, continues to, to astound me and, and just inspire me to, to offer more at this school. Um, and Sasha or, or Alex, I gotta say, uh, your salsa last night was not as disgusting as you think. Uh, I tried it myself and I thought it was actually kind of tasty. Okay, to be honest, okay, maybe it was let's, when you tried let's, it. Let, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. No. Um, I do just want to move forward here uh, very quickly with uh, the last of our presentation and a few uh, more details for further information. Uh, but one final thanks to all the staff, to, to Virginia and Jess and to Mara and Sarah. Uh, for being here with us today, and especially to the young people. This is not an easy thing to do, Alex, as you said, uh, but you all did it very, very well. Thank you very much. Now, with regards to what we may call brass tacks or, or the more uh, logistical information that you are likely interested in, fees and scholarships at Braemar for a full year four term program, which would be 42 weeks. We do of course also offer a summer term of seven weeks, uh, especially beneficial to those students who are looking to add uh, a single credit or improve on a grade, perhaps to spend uh, half a day throughout the summer focused on one of those really difficult 12U courses that we need for university applications. That can be very helpful. But from September to June, 2022 to 2023, you can see the numbers here for your application fee for the eight courses that they, the student will take over those four terms for the textbooks and for their activity fee. We're also very pleased to be able to offer up to $5,000 scholarships and uh, also to offer those who apply before October 23rd uh, a waived application fee. For more information regarding fees and scholarships, uh, you can contact info at braemarcollege.com. You've also left a number here. Uh, if any of you would like to just take a minute and record that, that you can call any time uh, to speak to any number of our representatives. Just going to take a beat and make sure anyone who needs that information is able to record it or maybe even just screenshot it. And finally, uh, we are offering a good deal more information as well as some physical tours for those of you who are here with us in Toronto or perhaps in one of the boroughs. Uh, I know we have uh, some registrants from Scarborough and from Vaughan today. Uh, for more information about sales and admissions, please contact our sales manager, Mrs. Tamara Conaval, who I'm going to turn things over to in, in just a second here. Um, and her email is just there at the bottom, tamara at braemarcollege.com. We're also offering in-person tours with yours truly, uh, for better or worse. So please, if you want to see the school and get a better sense of what life is like here on a day-to-day -day basis, register for a specific time slot at this website, braemarcollege.com backslash web events. You'll see a registry option available there. If you have further questions, especially about the student experience here, both in and outside the classroom, please email them to myself mike at braemarcollege.com and I'll try to address that uh, immediately whether it's answering it myself or turning you to someone who can answer it better than I can. And very quickly just going to ask Tamara uh, our sales manager if uh, she's got anything to say to wrap this up and then we'll let you uh, move forward with your days. Tamara? Yeah, how are you? Yeah. I'm good. Thank you so much, Mike, for organizing this wonderful uh, online open house. Uh, of course, it would be better to have you all uh, here in school uh, without masks and so on. But I was really about to cry when students were speaking. And um, it's uh, make me uh, feel really pleased uh, and uh, um, comfortable uh, doing what we are doing. And uh, um, changing the lives of those young uh, adults. And um, um, I hope they're really happy here and that we're not really the words just for camera. Uh, anyway, 
Uh, in case you have any questions about admissions, about fees, uh, you can uh, contact me or you can ask questions right now. So uh, for anybody who don't have the questions, we will wrap it up. Uh, and we are here to help you if you uh, have anything to ask. So any questions, please. I did see one question in the chat earlier related to music related subjects at school. I'm pleased to say that we, we do have music related subjects at school. They are not offered every term. We, we have a, a limited number of courses per term, uh, but we have the equipment and the educators and we have offered uh, music classes in the past. Happy to do so again, if requested by the students. Also, from the perspective of a director of student experience, it really makes our, our Christmas fair and some of our uh, in-school events a lot more fun when we have a music class with a band ready to play there. So absolutely, yes to the music. Uh, Bilal, I saw a hand go up. Bilal Ahmed, if you want to ask your question. Uh, yes. Uh, could I, uh, sir, could you uh, take me to the October schedule, please? I would like to take a screenshot. This is the October student activity schedule, yes? Yes, for my convenience. For sure. Just give me one second. There it is for you. And of course, um, our student activities program is subject to change. As I said, we try very hard to respond to the interests of the student body year by year. Um, so this schedule is what we're doing right now. Uh, it contains elements that we will always emphasize, including physical fitness and mental health, uh, but the specifics are subject to change depending on the uh, willingness and the, the interests of the students. Thank you, sir. Sure. And for those who, who perhaps don't have any questions immediately, uh, or you'd like a more comprehensive conversation later, uh, we just wanna thank you very much for taking the time out of your day uh, to join us. Uh, and we ask that um, you please send those questions at your convenience to any of the sources I've mentioned, including myself, uh, Tamara, or info at braymarcollege.com. So there was just a question in the chat for students who will start in November. Anything need uh, to get up? Uh, in fact, they will start uh, the new courses and they will not need to catch up anything. Uh, so meaning that they will start in November. Uh, they will take their two courses and uh, uh, then they continue in term three, term four. They, are, uh, they also can take a summer if they would like. They can take summer off uh, uh, and continue their study with term one in September. Uh, so uh, because the system here based on credits, so they need to receive a certain number of credits. All the students um, uh, in order to graduate and receive Ontario secondary school diploma will need to obtain 30 credits. So we will transfer all the credits they received uh, in their home country or in Canada into our system and see how many credits as they have to uh, complete. Uh, you also uh, probably noticed that some of the students are taking express option. Uh, those option is available for the students who are really hardworking and we are making sure that we don't uh, uh, give it to anybody who, who would like to take it. We wanna make sure that you will not fail your courses because in fact, if you take one extra course, uh, you uh, take 50% uh, more uh, work. Yeah, so they will not miss anything if they start in November. So there's a question, a deadline for IELTS. Ah, oh, this is from Virginia. In March for different universities, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, we'll take just a few more seconds and uh, be available for you if you need it. But again, uh, if you do not have any further questions, thank you for your time and uh, you're more than welcome to leave the meeting.
and we look forward to further communication with you uh, either via email or phone in the future. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you to the staff. Thank you to the students. Thank you to the parents and the guardians. Uh, all the best. Have a great day out there, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Good day. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everyone.